we took the challenge, and when we, the challenge was unsuccessful, um, as we were exiting the the huddle, that's on me. I got to I've got to remind the guys we're we're out of timeout. So I didn't say that, and so Steph wasn't aware. So that's that's on me for um, not making that clear. And then on that play, we had all four of the other guys running to the other end, and they they hit Steph in the backcourt. We didn't have a trail man, so we got to handle the pressure better. Um, you know, late game, make, take care of the ball. But the timeout is 100% uh, on me. And is it a little stunning for everybody to have that happen, give up a point, then lose possession of the ball, give up a three? What was just kind of the conversation? What was the mood as this is happening? All of a sudden, it's a one-point uh, game. You're just moving on to the next play. I mean, there's no time to um, to to be angry or frustrated. You just have to... You just got to keep keep going, and our guys did that. We made a couple of incredible stops down the stretch. Um, got got a couple of key rebounds. We uh, we we had uh, a chance to really uh, break it open there in the final minute, um, you know. But for that play and the uh, the turnover in transition, uh, so give give them credit. You know, Sacramento really really hung in there, but uh, our guys um, closed it out with a stop at the end, and uh, we're where we need to be. You guys kind of doubled Fox late on that last yeah. possession. Um, were, you, were you okay with the look that Barnes got and just what, what's your mindset as you're kind of watching that shot go up? Uh, yeah, we wanted to get the ball out of Fox's hands and uh, try to get back to um, wherever the shooter was going to be. And in that case, it was Harrison. And you got a good look. It kind of reminded me of the Wiggs look in game one. Um, you know, these games are uh, coming down to the, to the wire and um, – you just got to, you know, really finish possessions and, and try to give yourself the best chance. And then sometimes it's just, does the ball go in or not? What, what did you think of Draymond's defense, uh, especially down the stretch? And then also just kind of take us through some of the decision making uh, in, in bringing him off the bench instead of starting. Um, well, uh, his defense was great. You know, I, I, it was, he hadn't come off the bench in 10 years since before I, I was coaching. Uh, so, but he came to me after, uh, immediately after game three, he drove back to the arena. I was in my office and he walked in and he said, what do you think about me coming off the bench? And, and um, I had been thinking about it already because of the, the, the way Sacramento was guarding us and, um, you know, just getting another shooter on the floor. And so we always collaborate, uh, you know, the, the uh, the decisions we make are collaborative with our key players, and and um, so that was a collaboration. Um, but Draymond offered it, and um, this is how we've approached a lot of playoff games. Um, you know, Steph has come off the bench. Uh, I think four games against Denver last year. Wiggs came off the bench game one. Um, you do whatever you have to do, and uh, I thought Draymond. Uh, had a great second half. Really got himself going uh, defensively. He was fantastic, and um, you know only had one turnover. Again, um, huge key for us taking care of the ball, and we did that. And um, we eventually got back to that two big lineup with Draymond and Loon, and um, they did a great job together. Steve, I, I was just going to ask you about going back to the two big lineup in the second half. Why, why did you have to kind of go back to that just in the, because of the way they were rebounding uh, against well, you? And Fox, Fox had such a big first half, so we wanted to change the coverage and the look. Um, you can't just keep doing the same thing if a guy is torching you like that. So we, uh, we decided to put Draymond on him, um, just change the look. And um, he still had a great second half. He's, uh, he's a handful, but... Um, you know, getting Draymond on him and then getting Draymond involved offensively, I think, got him going. Um, and, um, and I mean, he got himself going uh, through his play. And um, and he was great second half. Steve, you said you were uh, right here. You said you were thinking about taking uh, Draymond off the bench even before this game. Is that something that you want to continue to do as the series unfolds, or are you taking it still game by game? I'm not telling you that. Why, why not? Why would I just come here and tell I'm, you my strategy? I, I thought we were thought, tight. I mean, I thought we was cool. I thought you were just, <laughs> You're cool. Just let me know. You're really cool, but I'm not telling you. All right, for sure. <laughs> nice vans. Oh, Steve, in, in layman's terms, what, what's the logic behind bringing Draymond off the bench at the start? Uh, it becomes a one big 
game instead of a two big game. So, uh, so the spacing was an issue in the first two games in Sacramento, and the, the, the spacing was part of the reason for the turnovers. Um, so you take Draymond out and you put Jordan in, and now you got you know, four players around the three-point line, one big. It it just creates passing lanes, driving lanes, and uh, makes the game easier uh, on our offensive players. Okay. Did that become more evident because when Draymond set the game out, or was that? Uh, oh, did Draymond sitting the game out? Yeah. So I, I think the thinking behind it is, you know, when you when you play well in the playoffs and something good happens, then. You stick with it because you know these are games of you know really detailed adjustments. Unlike the regular season where you're just moving from game to game, uh, every playoff game is you, if you find something that works, you got to stay with it. And if it's not working, you got to try something different. So I think that's why Draymond and I were both thinking the same thing after after game uh, th three. Um, because we've been through this together for almost a decade, and uh, he saw it, it made a change in the uh, just the, the chessboard, and um, it, it allowed our guys uh, to have a little more space offensively. Steve, you, you've been through so many of these over here, over these uh, big games. You've won championships. From a to borrow Scott's term, a, a layman, it feels like. You, you, your team should be better at finishing games, right? Uh, but is it more about like, hey, this is what happens and it's about surviving it and that's what makes you so good or you expect to be able to finish better than you do as a champion? I think we'll finish better uh, next game. I think we'll do a better job. It's just a matter of uh, taking care of the details. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we did some great things down the stretch, getting stops, and uh, we just, you know, a couple times we couldn't get the offensive or the uh, defensive rebound, and then the the timeout uh, mess, which was my fault, and the turnover, you know. So you, all it takes is a couple plays, and it, it changes everything. So we'll, we got to be better, but I think we will be better. When Draymond approaches you and says that it might be better for him to come off the bench, what does that tell you about where his head is at and like where you know where the team is emotionally? Didn't surprise me because I know at his core, um, Draymond just wants to win, and uh, you know for all of his uh, emotion and passion and um, you know the. The, the things that he gets into with the league or with the opponent or with the officials, um, it's all coming from a place of competitive desire. He's um, one of the great competitors I've ever been around. He's one of the smartest players I've, I've ever been around. So didn't surprise me because he recognized um, the same thing that I did. Steve, Which what? made it a lot easier. Um, the fact that he came in and suggested it, that makes it a lot easier. And, um, and then we, we go from there. Steve, what did you think of Clay Thompson tonight? And, you know, he was a plus 22 in 39 minutes. Clay was amazing uh, at both ends, hit some huge shots. Um, but also his defense, I thought, um, was, you know, that was vintage two-way Clay. Um, just both ends of the floor, making one big play after another, you know, playing 39 minutes. Um, that was really, really something. Steph played 43 minutes the entire fourth quarter. You played basically seven guys in the second half. Is that just where the series is? And can you keep up this kind of hard minutes on these guys? This is where the game was tonight. Um, you know, they countered our substitution pattern in game three with some changes of their own tonight, um, trying to, you know, match up, get, get matchups that they preferred that probably kept Steph on the floor, uh, you know, a little bit longer. So we'll have to look at that. But um, ideally, um, I'd like you know, I'd like to keep him, you know, closer to 38, 37. But um, whatever the game calls for at this stage. What do you like about Draymond on Fox? And and was that just a halftime idea that that you know came to you guys? Yeah, I was, uh, someone on the staff suggested it, and um, you know that it's the beauty of Draymond defensively. There's so much versatility there that um, he can guard anybody, and uh, we just thought it would be a good. Um, idea to give Fox a different look um, and change the coverage a little bit, and um, I thought it, uh, it it clicked. You know, it worked. We had the big third quarter, and then you know Fox really got going. Um, but probably the biggest stretch of the game for them was the start of the fourth when he was out, and uh, their guys stepped up. I think you know went on a maybe a ten to two run to start the quarter or something like that, and got right back in the game. So that was a big moment, and that's why. Um, 
we kept our guys out there and why we used our timeouts up. Um, you know, when I had two left, I took the first one just to give the guys a rest um, because we were playing um, them a lot of minutes. And then, uh, you know, the second one obviously is the challenge. And then, you know, then we're left without one. So I was trying to give our guys as much rest as possible, knowing that we weren't getting getting our key guys out in the fourth quarter. Steve, following up on the third quarter, first half, you guys were out rebounded by a substantial margin. Second and third quarter, you guys won that by a big yeah. margin. Defense got better. In addition to the putting Draymond on, on Fox, what else? Was there anything else that you guys wanted to do, or was it just attitude changing? Attitude. Just you know, make sure we're much more active, especially from the perimeter. We were leaking out a little bit. I didn't think our guard rebounding was great in the first half. And uh, second half, our guards got back in there and uh, did a much better job. You know, Wiggs had eight. Um, you know, Steph had five. Jordan had a couple. So we, we our guys got back into the play, and uh, I thought we were a little more physical. Steve. Just a quick follow-up. You mentioned someone on the staff had that idea. You usually name that person. I was just curious who it was that had the idea to put Jamon on Fox. Uh, yeah. Well, Dayon mentioned it to me. I think he might have been discussing it behind the bench with Chris DeMarco. Um, you know, we, we've got like 117 coaches, so I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't, I'm not. I mean, quite I just sure go back to the Nicky Ren days with the, yeah, with the yeah, switch. Yeah, yeah. No, it, was, it was just uh, a couple, a couple of our coaches. I think it was Dayon and uh, and uh, CD um, bringing it up at halftime, and then you know, it's kind of our routine in, at half is to throw out some ideas and then settle on one. I guess the, just a quick follow is, is when, when one of your first big moves as head coach was putting Draymond on the starting lineup and not not on the bench, right? I think he switched him and Harrison. At that time, it meant a lot to him to be a starter. But does it? Do you think it matters to him now, or and sort of? Uh, he just wants to win, and he, you know he's he's going to tell you that if he comes in here. I mean, it's that's the only thing that matters at this stage. The regular season is so different. You know, you don't make moves like this um, the regular season because it's really about managing your team and every personality and making sure you got guys on board and. As soon as you're in the playoffs, all bets are off. You just do whatever you have to do. Thanks. Draymond, Steve just said you approached him uh, soon after last game and saying, hey, you, you, maybe it's an idea would be for you to come off the bench. Why did you think that? And is that hard to say, hey, I'm, I've been starting for a long time here, and let me come off the bench now? No. Um, you know, when I watch basketball, I, I'm studying, and I study the game. <clears throat> and I saw what was working, you know, um, and we won, you know, so I'm a firm believer in if something isn't broke, you don't fix it. And, you know, our offense was rolling. We played good defensively, really good defensively. So I didn't want to um, come back and just shake things up because I'm back. Like, that's not right. Um, Jordan went out there. He played well. We played well. He earned it. And, you know, our team earned that. You know, you don't – there's a lot of um, – a lot of guys who, you know, I mean, 11 years in, you start to feel a sense of entitlement. You know, like, that spot's yours and starting is yours. And I, I, I never want to reach that point in my career where I feel entitled to something. Um, those guys don't don't fare well in the end. So just wanted to do what I thought was best for this team, and it was good for us. They, they decided to have you guard Fox at halftime. Uh, how involved were you in those conversations? Did you like you know that change, and, and what did you just think of guarding Fox? Um, I mean, I loved it. Uh, you know, Fox is a great player, man. He's incredible. He continues to get better, and any time – you know, you, you, you draw the assignment to go guard the other team's best, best player. You know, you you appreciate the opportunity, and I, I definitely did, and wanted to guard and try to help this team win. And so I, as far as that conversation went, they just told me, like, yo, you got Fox? And I'm like, all right, cool. And I said, you try to take on that challenge and get his team what it needs. Specifically, when you were watching game three, what were the things that you saw that you said, yeah, like that, that is really working. We have to keep that going. And then how do you think it just went in this game? Our spacing was great um, in game three. It was absolutely incredible. And, you know, I thought it was, it was really good for our offense. And, um, 
you know, so when I saw that, you know, it was number one, it was very evident of where I needed to be even when I am on the floor. And you know, I think I did a good job of being where I needed to be tonight. I missed a bunch of layups, a whole bunch of layups. Um, but, you know, it, it kept the floor spaced the way it needed to be spaced, and I won't keep missing those layups. So uh, I thought it was great, but, you know, just really understanding uh, the spacing on the floor and, and how I needed to play in space as well, even um, no matter who I'm out there with. Draymond, um, immediately after, well, after that crazy ending, um, you went right to Bob Myers and had a word with him. Can you can you share anything about that interaction? Oh yeah, um, you know, was, we were just talking about the end of the game um, and really how I could be better um, at at the end of the game. I know everyone will blame Steph and say, "Oh man, he called the timeout," but I'm supposed to trail the play and uh, not leave him on an island, and I left him on an island. And then I gave up a three to Fox uh, and let them cut it to one as opposed to taking the three away, you're up four. If they score two, so be it. And uh, I didn't do that, you know. And so uh, we was just talking about that and, you know, how I could be better uh, down the stretch in that situation to make sure we don't get in that position again. Draymond, two quick ones. When you went into Kerr's office and said you wanted to come off the bench, if he had disagreed, would you have argued with him? No, no. Um, you know, it was just a suggestion. And also, <clears throat> you have to understand the position that, that coaches are in. Um, he's also in a position where I've done a lot. And to just take me out of the lineup because I'm suspended for a game, if, if, if I don't agree with it, what could that do to this group, right? What could it do to us? Um, not that I would have disagreed, but I think it's more so to, to let him know, like, if you are more this decision, make it, right? Like, it's totally fine. And then he called me again yesterday, or um, what's today? Sunday. Okay, so. Yeah, he called me Saturday, and um, <clears throat> and we were just talking about it, and he was asking me, like, yo, what what are your thoughts? Like, this is why we wouldn't do it X, Y, and Z. I'm like, yeah, this is why we should do it X, Y, and Z. And, um, you know, one of his words was like, but how are you going to feel coming off the bench? You have not come off the bench in, in uh, nine years in the playoffs. How are you going to feel? Who fucking cares? Like, <laughs> who cares how I feel? Um, I mean, if... If I must answer the question for you, I'm fine. I'll be ready to go when it's time for me to go in, but it doesn't matter how I feel. I think the right thing to do will be to start the game the exact way we started game three. That's don't matter how I feel. And, you know, so many times I, I can appreciate that, um, you know, the courtesy, the respect, but who cares? It's about winning basketball games at this time of year, whether you come off the bench, whether you start, whether you play two minutes or 40. Winning the game is the most important thing. So those were some of the conversations we had, but I was um, definitely all for it. Okay. Second thing, quickly. Uh, is this the chance you guys have been waiting for all year to kind of flip that switch? You, you got to go up Sacramento on the road. You guys have been bad on the road. This is... I don't think it's truth. necessarily a, a switch to flip. Um, we know what it takes to win on the road. We know what we, go need, to, we need to go do, and you have to execute that. Um, but... We've known what we need to do all year and didn't execute. So I don't think it's it's a necessarily a flip of a switch. Um, you know, it's locked in and focused on, on what you need to focus on. And I have no doubt that we'll do that. Um, Jeremiah, in, in the first half of the first game after you're suspended, you get a technical it's foul. beautiful, <laughs> huh? It's very on brand. Absolutely. Um, how, what it what, message, in what the message world. were you trying to? I'm still to here. And don't shit change. Still here. And ain't no tech moving me off my square. So, um, you know, Fox felt the need to stand up for his guy. I respect it. I uh, respect that 100%. But I'm still here. And don't nothing change me. Been this way for 33 years. I pray I can be this way for 33 more. And it won't just be basketball, right? Like that comes to an end. But I am who I am. And everything else just is what it is. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. Uh, not really. 
but <laughs> sorry. Uh, I like people to feel good. That's one thing in my life I really appreciate is people feeling good. So if this one makes you not feel so good, I apologize. But I am who I am. Draymond, does this does this uh, does it feel better that you survived that kind of like wild ending where you made a lot of mistakes? Does it feel like encouraging that you survived it, or is it more frustrating that you had a position to win and and gave them a shot to win it? No, um, you don't you don't carry frustrations in in the playoffs. Uh, if this is a regular season game. You you probably walk off and you're a little upset and you're like, man, like should have never been this hard, but it's not. Uh, it's the playoffs, and every game counts. And so whether whether we win it going away and controlling the end or we have to fight to win it like we did today, you take the win and you move on. Now, um, <clears throat> you look at that and you say, okay, what can we learn from that? Well, I know that I cannot leave the ball. I have to stay behind the basketball to give an outlet. All right, cool. I know and understand we're up four with under a minute to go. I, the last thing I can do is give up a three. I know that, you know, and so um, making sure everyone understands those things and don't make the same mistakes I make, I think is extremely important. Uh, and you learn from that, but you don't walk off complaining or uh, with, your, with your head down. You won the game in the playoffs, you ride that momentum and try to go get the next one. Raymond, this team has a tradition of guys stepping back and, and accepting a bench role or go back to Iguodala to start all this. Steph last year when he was hurt and he you know he he's, comes off the bench for most of the Denver series. He even had Wiggins. As Steve mentioned Wiggins. This, do you feel this is just who you guys are? Was yours a little different than that, or is it just something about the culture that says the main guys can take a step back at times? Um, <clears throat> uh, I mean, I think you know number one is it's who we always have been. Uh, you you have guys on this team that are strictly about winning. Um, and and about the team and and if you are a guy that is not that way, you stick out like a sore thumb, and because that's been the culture here. So for me, um, it was a very easy thing. We won the game pretty handily. <laughs> You're gonna just walk back in the door like, all right, fellas, I'm back, and here's my spot. Like, no, that shit don't work like that. Um, you do what's best for the team. And, you know, with me just sitting and watching that game, I just thought that was best. And I thought it was clear as day. And I thought, um, you know, I could see that from a mile away, literally a mile away. And, you know, I just thought that was the right thing to do. And, you know, Steph thought it was the right thing to do. And, you know, Wiggs, it doesn't matter who it is. Um, your time is your time, and if it's not, it's just not. And I don't think it was my time to come in the starting lineup and make things about me. It, we won game three, try to do the same thing in game four. Could it be the right thing to do the rest of the series? If that's what Coach uh, thinks and uh, that's what works, absolutely. I will have to go watch the film and see you know, how all of those things fare throughout the course of this game. Um, but if it's right, it's right. I don't care. Um, I'm play the same amount of minutes I normally play, and doesn't really matter. So that's kind of my mindset. Draymond, speaking of of collaboration, when a couple of assistants mentioned at halftime, let's let's put Draymond on Fox in the second half. I mean, how how did that conversation go, and how did you uh, like that challenge? Uh, it was just very simple. Um, yo, you guarding Fox, and this is what we're doing. Um, I love the challenge. Um, you know, Fox is a great player. And, you know, anytime you get, I have the opportunity to guard a great player, you take on the challenge and you feel good about it and you go meet force with force. And so that's what I wanted to do. Um, <clears throat> you know, I always knew, you know, as this series is going, that's something that we had in our back pocket. Uh, if I'm being honest, I was very happy <laughs> that we pulled that card out of the pocket. Um, and Wiggs was doing a great job, you know, but when you have a great player like De'Aaron Fox, you can't just give him a steady diet of anything. Like, it can be, it can work wonders. Great players eventually figure it out. And so, you know, uh, it, was, it was a different look that we gave him, and I thought it was, um, 
you know, it was good. And, you know, when you get in these playoffs, it's a chess match. You know, we know them, they know us. And, you know, so who's going to pull the card at the right time is important in these series. And I thought Steve and our coaching staff did a great job. Draymond, uh, Steve said that Clay's defense was vintage two-way Clay. What have you seen about his progress <coughs> on that side of the ball? Well, his progress is great. Um, you know, he and Rick and our training staff, they continue to put the work in. Uh, on off days, he's in here putting the work in, making sure his body's ready to go. So you can always appreciate the effort um, that guys are putting in that everyone doesn't get to see in the world. You know, you know uh, when the preparation is there. And he's been preparing, and he's continued to do that. Uh, no, You know, he's been back playing all year, yet he's in that weight room every day, training room every day, doing the things that he needs to do to not only be ready to go, but to continue to get stronger. You know, and, and, and he's doing that. Uh, as far as him competing and looking like Clay, it's, it, it's April. That is who Clay Thompson is. Um, he is one of the biggest winners, biggest and best winners I've ever been around. Um, that is what matters most to him. So it's never a doubt uh, whether he's going to compete or not. That's who he is, and that's why we've had the success. Um, when he's healthy and when he was not, that's why we suck. Two more, Anthony, then Considering everything that is at stake, was at stake, what are you thinking when the ball gets swung to Barnes and he rises up three for the win? You got to make that. It is what it is. We know Fox can make a shot. He won clutch player of the year. So what I'm not doing is giving him an ISO with anyone um, and just watching him work and living with that. We're not going to live with that. Uh, we know that. Got to make somebody else beat you. If he hit it, great shot. He didn't. And, you know, <clears throat> whether he hit it or not, it's the right thing um, to make someone else beat you. He didn't. It worked. Great shot. Draymond, you guys in the first half got beaten on the on the glass pretty good. Third quarter, you guys came out with a whole different energy. It looked like, in addition to you, de you know, defending uh, Fox. What changed in the third quarter because the energy level really went up? Uh, we put bodies on bodies. We understood that you know they had um, their physicality. Uh, they controlled that department in the first half. And if you want to win these games, you have to control the physicality department. Um, they controlled it pretty handily the first two games. They walked with those two games. We controlled it in game three. We won pretty handily. They controlled it in the first half. They were ahead at halftime. We controlled it in the second half. We were able to pull a win out. So uh, it's very evident how important that is in this series. And I knew, um, you know, we needed to be better in that department. So you try to take some things up on yourself and and, you know, make sure you're bringing the level of physicality that needs to be brought. And, you know, at the same time, also lead, you know, and, and show other guys what that level of physicality need, need to be. And everybody fell in line and did that. Loon, uh, who's also a leader in that department, stayed physical the entire game. And everybody else, you just mentioned Clay, uh, who was physical as hell the entire game. And so, you know, uh, Wiggs was super physical, you know, and that's what it takes to win these games. Great, thanks. We'll have Steph, Clay, and Looney.